Hi, welcome to this part of my review featuring the early access version of the Black Paper Moon rulebook. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review featuring this role-playing game of dark themes and whimsical tropes, please check out the playlist in the description below. At the time of this review, the Kickstarter is still ongoing, so you may want to check it out. Before we continue, I would like to talk about this channel's sponsor, Heroes and Hardships. This is a universal RPG system, allowing you to play any sort of campaign, scenario, story. You can create any sort of character imaginable. You have hundreds of tools to accomplish that. I'm going to put a few links in the description that will take you to the Kickstarter that is ongoing, and it is in its stretch goals. You will also find links to the website, to the Discord, to the Tetsubo section of the website. Tetsubo is an upcoming setting inspired by Japan's Sengoku era. You are also going to find links to my reviews of the Early Access Core Rulebook, the Quick Start Guide and the Wallace Campaign setting, based on the life and exploits of William Wallace. So please check it out. Now, let's continue. This time we are going to talk about building a character. The included bestiary or monster collection and the included scenario. Let's start with character creation. Making your character in Black Paper Moon is quite fun and simple. First, you state the name of your character. Then, you name your preferred weapon or type of attack. If your preferred weapon is a sword, for example, then you get to roll 2d6 or 2 six-sided dice when attacking with that weapon. Any other weapon that you use, improvised weapons and such, deal less damage. When it comes to power, this could be considered a character class in a sense. You could be a rogue, a wizard, a ghost, a shogoth, an android, you could be anything. And any sort of task or skill check related to your power is going to have an advantage, you're going to be rolling two six-sided dice. So let's say that you are a ghost, you are obviously going to have advantage when trying to be sneaky, stealthy, perhaps trying to float across a chasm or pit, but if you are like a Frankenstein monster, then you're not going to be exactly very easy to hide, or maybe you will have difficulties when it comes to social challenges depending on who you interact with. You also have drawbacks. A drawback is a restriction to your power. It may be that you become exhausted after using the power too much, or maybe using your power makes you temporarily blind or it's hard to control. And you also have deviation, which is basically a quirk that sometimes hinders you but at the same time makes you quite unique. You have tables to determine these things randomly or to spark ideas. For example, maybe you want to determine if your character specializes in melee weapons or ranged weapons, you could determine that randomly along with the weapon, maybe you wield sides or daggers or spears, maybe you use bows or revolvers or machine guns, you can also determine the element of your weapon, maybe it's a fire based attack or a lightning based attack, perhaps your weapon has a rapid attack mode or has a shield attachment, you also have a power generation table. You can determine if your type of power is based on controlling someone or perhaps dealing direct damage. Maybe it deals dark damage or maybe you have a telekinesis sort of power. You also have a drawback table. Maybe your power drains stamina. Perhaps it is only usable in specific situations. You also have a deviation table. Maybe you are ashamed of your power or maybe you are extremely shy. This book includes sample pre-generated characters, such as Ulf Kegborn, wielding a keg hammer, he's a beer circer. Or maybe you want to play as Mary Victoria, that is a ghost and is obsessed with seeing blood. Now let's talk about the monsters or beast theory section. Monsters come in all shapes and sizes on Umbra. The origins of monsters seem to stem from a great apocalyptic event that happened centuries ago. Time has since lost many records, including what exactly life was back then, or what caused the apocalypse to occur. Generally speaking, monsters should be of the same rank as the mission or quest that the characters are undertaking. Typically, you want several monsters or challenges of the given rank per player. In addition to this, consider including a boss monster which would be a single strong monster that's an equal or higher rank to the given quest. 
If the boss monster is of an equal rank, they would likely have additional monsters aiding them. Monsters can be adjusted, increasing or decreasing them according to the needs of the player. In most cases, monsters roll 1d6 for attacking and defending, unless they have a power that states otherwise. Now, because there are players watching this, I am going to be avoiding spoilers when talking about these monsters. You have bat swarms. You have Dracula, the vampire lord himself. There are dragons. There are flying bazooka monkeys. There are ghosts, grey martians, killer robots, spider bags, skeletons, werewolves, and many others. Now, as mentioned earlier, this rulebook includes a scenario, a starting scenario, perhaps to jumpstart a campaign. This is called the Dark Invitation. I am going to avoid spoilers as well. The characters are invited to a welcoming party at a fancy mansion. A character's reason for going can differ from character to character. So, from the very start, you are integrating the background, the personal history of each character to the reason as to why they want to assist this party. This scenario is simple but effective. You have a section dealing with social interaction, but there's also going to be plenty of combat action. You could say that this scenario, because of an included plot twist, has ample opportunities to develop your character, that is the character's personality, but you will also get to see how your character reacts in moments of great tension and great peril. So overall, what do I think of Black Paper Moon? I think this is an excellent rules light role-playing game. The die tower mechanic is very exciting, it has a certain Jenga feel to it, so it's also about your dexterity as a person in real life, but you are also free to use any sort of idea original or based on tropes that you know from anime or video games or anything. This is all about characterization, developing your personal story, especially if you decide to play this as a campaign and creating some awesome battle scenes that you would expect to see in your favorite anime. So definitely consider getting Black Paper Moon. This is the early access version, but the typos and the blurriness of the illustrations that I mentioned in the first part are going to be corrected for the finalized version. Thank you for watching this review. Thank you for your likes and your comments as well. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you, and see you later!